You must pay careful attention to what you have heard so that you do not drift away. I looked across many translations and most of them use drift. A few use a few other words, but drift is the main idea. And I think I've established somewhat what drift is. Some of the other words that were used are slip, forget, glide, float, but you get the main idea, drift. I, I think I started there. And one of the things that I sought permission on before we got started was whether I should mention, because we are a senior, generally senior crowd, oh, our own sense as to how things may be drifting. Because the drift might be coming to a denomination near you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was I've been paying not close attention, but some attention to our mother denomination, the Wesleyan origins of our faith. I know there are like seven or eight, I think, different denominations coming up, maybe a lot more out of Wesley's orientation of scriptural interpretation. But you know that the, I would say the main one, the Methodist church, just in America, just split last month. Hmm. And I had passed out a handout of what I was looking at. And you can probably tell it's maybe an avalanche. It's the culture, the culture wars that are driving this change right now. Culture wars. Culture wars, yes. The way the world is changing and things that I don't have an opinion on deeply. I still believe that this is the inerrant word of God. I am not going to put my toe too close into that sulfur because it is actually a lot of issues there. But I passed that out because I found this one site and I mentioned the website in case you want to check on it on the bottom of the first page. I mentioned People Need Jesus, I think was the website. And it, it said, basically said what the issues were. But because it just happened on May 1, so the background, as far as I understand it, is that the, it's not Synod, the last conference in 2016 was going to, had proposed some things to be voted on every four years, the 2020 mm -hmm. conference, and COVID obviously made that not happen. And they kept pushing back the conference. And now the next conference will be in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> According to what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't want to say get too deep into this, but I want to talk about the fact that drift can occur. And maybe as you point out, it's more than drift. One generation might decide to view things differently than another generation. And it's called a schism, actually. That's the official word, schism. But I, th I think I heard at the last vote, the conservatives were like 52%, a small majority of the vote. And as you can understand how culture changes, every year the conservatives are losing some of the voting because older people don't live forever. <laughs> and the future was that the church was going to be more liberal. But also what happened is that a lot of the branches of the church were no longer following the doctrines of the church. They were doing what they wanted to. They were saying, okay, well, we're not gonna obey these things anymore. And it was hard to govern under those circumstances. I also heard that in Canada, those of you who are close enough to Canada and more affiliated, associated with Canada might know this better. The Methodist Church had already merged into the United Church of Christ several years ago, and that's the, the main denomination. And apparently you can be an atheist and be a pastor in the United <laughs> Church of Christ. So they don't have any firm thing that they hold on to anymore because they merged so many denominations and the compromise, all ideas contend. 
Because your congregation is willing to put up with you being atheist, then that's fine. <clears throat> Which is to me offensive that you can be an atheist leading a congregation. How can it make logical sense according to the definition of the terms? Right. You're yeah. a professor. How does that how does that work? I think it's like when your family is no longer working together, but you're trying to hold it together. Hmm. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. No, but it's, it's not what I'm asking. I mean, how can you take the terms as they are defined mm -hmm. and, and put an atheist in that position? That's what I just, I don't understand what they're, whether or not I agree with it, I don't understand the logic of that appointment. How can it make sense according to the definition of terms that we use? I don't know, but there are other denominations out there where you can believe anything and you can be a member. It's mainly a community more so than anything. That is what I'm seeing, but I don't have enough knowledge on that. I know I'm drifting, <laughs> but I wanted to say that things happen and sometimes the drift can occur because either we change our minds on things as was happening in this context, or <clears throat> you might not change your mind, but you might be pressured along a certain way. So drift, let's talk about drift as we understand it. And I'm going to- well, allow I'll you. go first. Uh, Commissioner Ken Bailey uh, does believe in and taught at training college a, 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 such a thing as spiritual evolution. And that talks about the evolution of Christianity as a faith. Now, whether or not these kinds of uh, directions, these directions could be encompassed in that is, is the matter of discussion, I believe, but he taught such a thing as spiritual evolution. And so drifting could be a, a, a confining term if we're actually going to have that discussion. And maybe we don't want to have that discussion. Maybe that discussion threatens us. You know, um, who knows? So I gave a definition of the word drift from the dictionary to be carried along, subject to no guidance or control. That would be drifting, yeah. <laughs> Going to the Salvation Army in Port Huron, it was believed that you could not attend anything for which you had to pay admittance. So the uh, <clears throat> fella who was leading the youth group would take the kids out and do open airs in, in the small communities around Port Huron and get back into Port Huron at time for halftime at the football, high school football or basketball game when they didn't have to pay admission. And then they could all go in and watch the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So then, then <laughs> my mother and father changed, changed that sort of belief to it's okay to pay admittance and go to the whole basketball game or football game for my sister and I. And, and it was also a sin to go to a movie theater and watch a movie. And there were individuals who, who were friends of mine who on vacation were allowed to go to movies. Because if you're camping in a tent and you have 14 days of rain, it's hard to find something to do with the children, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so going to a movie was okay. I decided, I, I wasn't allowed to go to movies as a child. I decided on my own as a uh, married woman at 19 that it was okay to go to movies. I allowed my children to go to movies. Now I have to say that once or twice they went with some neighbor kids and I didn't really have any clue of what movie they saw and it was not appropriate for them to go to that. As soon as I found out then they no longer could go with those kids. I, I wasn't allowed to dance. So uh, I decided that my, and, and I asked the reason, why can't I dance? I mean, they talk about dancing in the scripture. So I, I was told that 
when you get out of high school, it's okay to go to high school dances, but when you get out of high school, where can you go to dance? A bar. And what's at a bar? Alcohol and smoking. And and so if 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 we allow you to dance and you fall in love with dancing, uh, you're on the road to perdition. So I I decided as a parent of junior high students, they could go to school dances. I thought those boys would probably not enjoy dancing and not go to the bar later. But one of them did manage to go to bars a lot without it, having it to be the dance. So uh, I was raised with a lot of man-made rules that I asked why I, I couldn't go to movies because on the movie marquee, it, it, it would say what, what movies are playing. But if somebody knew that I was a Christian and I had stood on the corner at an open air and gave a witness, well, just a being there in my uniform is a witness. And people would not look at the marquee to see what movie I was going to. They would think the worst. And now my witness is compromised. So I was raised with all these man-made rules that were very confusing to me. And they're still confusing to me. I, I have no problem with scriptural rules, but the man-made ones just drive me nuts. Well, it's okay to rip them out. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, but, but, but you see, in my parents' view, Drifting from those man-made rules was right. as bad as drifting. But that was the in what's in a man's mind, not in God's. No. So we live for God. But see how confusing that is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't parents have the authority yes. to set rules for their children yes. based yes. on their own understanding right. of how things work in their own faith? Otherwise, you would have a million different sets of rules and a million sets of households. Yeah. I personally I couldn't dance, but I should go to the roller skating race every Saturday night with yeah. the kids from the course. I snuck to two movies. And in both times all the other youth at the core were at the movies. And I went around saying to them, don't tell your parents who saw me here, don't tell my parents. Does anyone else have a different well, I'd like to like to respond to that. I think one of the things that we need to keep separate in, in our thinking, or at least segregated in our thinking, is the difference between faith and practice. Mm -hmm. Faith requires certain things, but the practices of our particular organization are based on converting drunkards and getting them through the next 24 hours. That's where we started. The rule book is, is that thick, which tells them how to make their bed, how to leave their windows open so they don't die from the, the fumes of the fires that are eating their homes. Mm -hmm. we've, come from, we've come from the drumhead with the drunkard to a middle-class society. That comes mm -hmm. under practice. Mm -hmm. And we have a very difficult time separating faith and practice in the modern day. I've lost 18 cousins uh, to the Salvation Army. Uh, we all grew up together at the Detroit Citadel Corps, and we all believed that those practices were a firm part of our faith. We should have segregated that conversation a long time ago. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's a confusion that begins, and, and in a lot of minds, you attach the same importance to the scriptural rules and the foundation of our faith as we do to the man-made rules. So I, I, I think that that there needs to be some drifting in the teaching perhaps and perhaps there has been. You don't mean don't drifting. Say drifting yeah. But I mean if you're, if you're in the ARC with a guy who's on day three yeah. and he decides he's going to drift from the practice of sobriety he, he could, he, he does die. He goes out and he dies. Yeah. And so there, does it, does it, back, back in those days, there was an urgency that says, you know, you might have eternal life, but you're going to die if you make this mistake again. Right. So he, he doesn't lose eternal life by drinking. But you can't have that conversation with a guy that's been sober for less than a week. No, but you can have that conversation 
with children as they're growing up and young adults and 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 other new people to the faith mm -hmm. now this becomes a complex conversation exactly. because every teacher is not equally skilled every parent doesn't have the same orientation and then you could try to bring together 50 different households with so many different sets of rules and you can't do anything so you have to at least lay the foundation and say well if you want to be a part of this community here are the boundaries that we're going to set there are other communities to which you could belong but this community will set a certain standard and that's the way we have hundreds of different communities right and and like i said when i went to the movie there, there were all the other kids from the fort and and but i was to set an example because i was the poor officer's daughter and i think that that was too much of a burden it was too much of a burden for my sister i i succumbed to most i had questions but i the, these these are the rules of our home and i will except for sneaking <laughs> i never went to a dance this is confessional now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, it, but it is confusing. What what are the the foundational things of scripture that that we need to teach people that people need to learn? You know? I think the point was made that behavior is also important. So you might say here's scripture, but in different cultural contexts, as John is saying, you need to add to that. I uh... I grew up with those same rules and the older I get, the more reasonable I think they are. <laughs> <laughs> but it's teaching kids the rules. Yeah. 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 And if we can't submit to the parent in the home, how will we submit to God? Okay, but with it, with, to, to add to my confusion, was that the parents of these kids that were doing things I wasn't allowed to do were leaders in the church. Mm. What's a good solution here? I don't know. I'm asking. Commissioner, help us out. Well, I don't, I don't think I need much help at all. That's what Nancy tells us. One of the watershed moments, I think, in the Salvation Army, when it was was when it was decided that Salvation Army soldiers could not smoke. So for years, that was not the regulate. I mean, that was not the requirement to be a Salvation Army soldier. And the argument was, we have a lot of people coming to our programs who have grown up on tobacco or been exposed to smoking and smoke, and it may be too much to expect them to give up smoking, like you know, right now. In order to become a soldier, so you can be a Salvation Army soldier and still smoke. But you couldn't drink. I, you're right, you couldn't drink, but you could smoke. And then the rules were changed when the rules were changed, and it was decided you could not smoke and be a Salvation Army soldier, which we have it on programs like the ARC and the Harbor Light, where a lot of those people were dealing with other issues. And it may have been too much to ask them to give up tobacco in order to become a member of the Salvation Army. So they always seem to be somewhat hypocritical and always seem to be somewhat, uh, I just lost what I was going to use here, how, how, why we talk and preach and, and live holy lives or try to live holy lives still allow people to be soldiers who use tobacco. Well, the drift Which was causing people to die. Yeah. The drifting topic is a hard topic to deal with, but we are called, as the verse says, to pay careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. There's no good solution on this one. And I feel badly again, I didn't have my glasses on my Bible, so I'm hands, hamstrung here. Think about drifting. Once you commit to something, you want to say, I've committed to it. I think that's the main thing. You don't want to drift away from your commitment. As one song says, I know whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him. So don't drift. Summary of the lesson for today in practical terms is, if you've made a covenant, don't drift. Strive to be accountable 
or have somebody accountable to you so that they prevent recruitment. That's great.